They are quite literally, your adrenal glands are quite literally our bodyguards. Because circulation of the blood is so vital, it may be the single most vital process in the body, how the blood circulates. Blood delivers nutrients, blood delivers oxygen, blood removes toxins from the body. And we say all the time on this program, all disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is blood disease. Because the circulatory system, the movement of blood is so vital, it's no surprise that the adrenal glands control our blood pressure. You have hypertension, you got an adrenal problem. The body is divinely intelligent and divinely inspired. It doesn't make mistakes. High blood pressure is not a mistake. High blood pressure, and it affects one out of maybe five or six Americans, that's pretty significant. High blood pressure is a classic example of a protective response. And not surprisingly, it's the adrenal glands that regulate the blood pressure. One of the ways, uh, one of the ways that the adrenal glands regulate the blood pressure is via salt. Potassium, and really not table salt, not sodium chloride only, but the electrolytes. The electrolytes are salts. When we talk about salt, most of us think of table salt, which is sodium and chloride, and that's a type of salt, but so is potassium, and so is calcium, and so is magnesium. Those are your main salts, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and chloride. They're your main mineral salts. And guess what controls the mineral salts? The adrenal glands. This is why drinking salt water can be so helpful if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue. This is why drinking salt water, and I'm talking Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt. I'm not talking necessarily uh, table salt. Drinking salt water, Celtic sea salt water, Himalayan salt water, or drinking your minerals from your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, from your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, is a great way to support adrenal health. It's a great way to lower your blood pressure. Your doctor will tell you, oh, don't drink salt, don't eat salt because... <laughs> because it will raise your blood pressure. More medical silliness. Sodium chloride are incredibly important for the adrenal glands and for adrenal health. And you can't avoid salt anyway because your body craves it and you're gonna find it somewhere. The way the body, the way the adrenal glands control salt is via a hormone that you don't hear a lot about. It's called aldosterone. Aldosterone can be considered our fluid and salt control hormone. It's an adrenal gland hormone. It's made in the adrenal glands because the adrenal glands regulate salt and they regulate blood pressure. And aldosterone is one of, it, probably the determining factor in assuring the appropriate concentration of electrical minerals, of electrolytes, are not only circulating in our blood, but also inside our cells. Sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, magnesium are critically important for the health of the cell and critically important for the, uh, for the movement of blood, for blood pressure. In times of stress, when we're burnt out, when something's going on in our lives, when we have diabetes or we have a chronic degenerative disease, aldosterone, the adrenal hormone aldosterone, is a major, major control factor by the way it influences minerals and by the way it influences fluids. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about aldosterone on our next Bright Side episode. And then we'll talk about some nutritional strategies that you can use to support adrenal health. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Coming back with your phone calls, 844-236-6010 is our number right after this break. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or blood pressure or skin or my truth treatment products or if you have success story or... You just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number two day and every day on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of my truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel or any of our vitamin C, topical vitamin C, topical fatty lipophilic premium vitamin C products, and I'm not talking a, a little bit of vitamin C, I'm talking 60, 70, 80% vitamin C. Uh, it, can you imagine 80% vitamin C and not cheap stuff either? That's what our truth serum is made, made with. Anyway, truthtreatments.com. You'll find it all uh, up at truthtreatments.com. You can purchase products right off the website. Okay, so we'll continue talking aldosterone tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll tell you why the sun may be one of the best ways to lower your blood pressure. 
There's a very important relationship between sunshine and aldosterone. We'll talk about that, that tomorrow as we continue discussing melanin, hyperpigmentation, skin issues, and why skin issues are not just skin issues tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Herman in Texas, good morning. What's going on? Uh, Herman, hello. do we got Herman? Herman? Yes. Yes, sir, this is me. Hey, Herman, what's up, man? Hey, I hear you. What's going on? Excellent, sir. Good morning, and uh, i got to preface by saying I love you, sir. Thank Good you. Good knowledge. I appreciate it. Uh, Thank I you. I appreciate have, uh, that. two questions, but... Oh, you're very welcome, sir. I appreciate you. Um, I have two questions, but I'll start with one. One's for my dad, one's for my daughter. Okay. First, my daughter has a uh, had a mole, uh, and they took it off. They biopsied it. They kind of scraped it off, and they sent it, and they got the result saying it's a benign, precancerous, uh, and what they want to do now is kind of dig around the skin around her now and pull that out. And uh, her mom's totally cool with it. I'm how old is she? I'm how, old, how old's your daughter? She's four. She's four? She's four. Really? Wow. Okay, yeah. so what else? Now, does she have anything else going on, especially digestive-wise? Constipation, loose stools, complaints anywhere in the digestive system? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Not, uh, we've... Yeah. That's the first place I would think of looking. If you're positive there's nothing going on there, then I wouldn't be w too worried about it. But you do want to make sure that she's getting nutritional supplements, especially anti-cancer ones like vitamin C. I'd be making sure she's doing vitamin C every day. I'd be sure she's doing, make sure she's doing her Beyond Tangy Tangerine every day. It's also probably a good idea to make sure she's on a good back, uh, probiotic supplement. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence. You might want to try the Fucoid Z, which also controls or has a beneficial effect on the digestive tract, on the, on the milieu that the bacteria are living in. And now you say she has no digestive issues, and that may be so, but look, put a, place a keen eye on how she responds to certain foods. It's very difficult. It's almost impossible not to have some kind of digestive issues the way we eat, the, just with the standard American diet. It's next to impossible. But because they can be mild, or sometimes the kids don't even notice them because they're so used to having them, they can go under the radar. So it's very important that you look for those. You might also want to try topical vitamin C on the area where she had the mole removed, and maybe even topical vitamin C head to toe, or at least on uh, in the areas that are going to be exposed to the sun. Although, as we've been talking, moles and melanin issues are not only topical but you can the sun can stimulate things so maybe using topical vitamin c uh, fatty vitamin c on her skin when she goes out to play in the sun but mostly you want to be considering that it's an internal issue use internal nutrients like uh, vitamin c also internal vitamin e can be helpful maybe 100 international units or 50 to 100 international units for her. Um, and then also her omega-3 her essential fatty acids omega-3 and omega-6s wouldn't wouldn't hurt her to get on the healthy star pack but at least the beyond tangy tangerine just put a little bit in water and have her sip on it like it's a Kool-Aid and then look for other health challenges, especially digestive issues. If they, you don't have them, she doesn't have them, she doesn't have them, but look for them. They may be there. All right, Herman? Cool. Uh, one more thing, sir, just so my, my, her mom understands. Uh, so how long do you think we should wait before she even sees a doctor? Because I said I want a second opinion, that being you, because I give you the there's not, There's not, you know, there's not much a doctor can do. You're going to see a mole. I mean, she's not going to, there's no very little incidences of skin cancer in four-year-olds. So you're not going to, you're not going to really necessarily see a problem. Are they going to dig in the skin to look for a potential problem that's about to come out? I'm sorry? What are they, what are they looking for exactly? Uh, honestly, I think they're just trying to make money. <laughs> well, sure that could very well be. Uh, yeah, that, nice that could very well be. You, you're going to have to make that assessment for yourself, I can't tell you. But I can tell you right. that the skin cancer is not a disease as a four-year-old. You know, typically, it's very rare that a little kid is going to have skin cancer. It's very rare that you're going to have a precancerous mole. Look for other issues. Try to correct those, and especially the digestive issues. That's usually where little children are going, to have, are going to have problems. And then topically, apply vitamin C to the area where they cut. And also, if you can, top, uh, topical vitamin C head to toe. And then also topical zinc oxide can also be helpful. Is she fair-skinned, fair I assume? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. get her on, get her, uh, your best, the best bet is going to be protective for future cancers. I don't know that a biopsy is going to make that much, what are they, I can't even, I don't even really understand what they're looking for, but uh, if you want to prevent further melanomas or, or further moles, I should say, uh, zinc oxide and topical vitamin C, and then make sure she's using her Beyond Tangy and her EFAs and her probiotics internally. Okay, my man? All right, sure. Thank, thank you. God bless much, you. Sir. Take care, bro. Bye-bye. God bless you. 
All right, yeah, topical zinc oxide is the way to go for protection. Topical zinc oxide is the way to go for topical protection. Not only do you get complete protection, which you don't get from most sunscreens, you don't get protection from UVA from most sunscreens. And if you do, they got to use oxybenzone, which is incredibly nasty and toxic. But zinc oxide is non-toxic and it will protect you from all solar rays. Okay, Shane in North Carolina, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hey, I was uh, just blessed with a healthy newborn baby and um, congratulations I, I was wondering what your thoughts are on the vitamin k injection at birth. Uh -huh. yeah vitamin k is really interesting it's made by gut bacteria and when babies are born they really don't have good gut bacteria they have to proliferate over the course of weeks and months and even years um, and that doesn't always happen so they do give vitamin k shots as you know now here's the thing about vitamin k shots which i never understood why don't they give the vitamin k orally why do they give a shot you know, the, the, the feeling is that babies are somehow uh, immune to pain, that babies don't feel pain, and that's why it's okay to give a baby a shot. Uh, it's not a good idea, in my opinion. Now, you, you do need vitamin K, probably, for the baby, but use oral vitamin K. Ask your doctor to use oral vitamin K, and if the mom's breastfeeding, make sure mom is getting vitamin K, because the vitamin K will come out in the breast milk. So, in my opinion, it's not like it's deadly or anything, but... You're causing the baby pain that it doesn't need. You're giving the baby a tremendously high dose of vitamin K, more vitamin K uh, than the baby needs, and you're breaking the skin and sticking a, a, a chemical, a drug chemical, inside the blood. And when we, are, when we get injected with these things, we think we're just getting vitamin K, or if we're vaccinated, we're just getting the vaccine. But there's preservatives, and there's excipients and fillers, and it comes in a, a, an oil solution that has to go in, that the vitamin K or the vaccine has to go in. So we're getting a lot of things that aren't necessarily the vitamin K or the vaccine. You follow me? And these are things that, right? These are things that the liver's not getting a chance to process as effectively as if you ate it, as if you took it orally. So if you need, the baby needs vitamin K, ask your doctor for oral vitamin K. It's kinder to the baby, and it's much more, uh, it's safer for the baby in the sense that you don't have the high doses, you don't have to deal with the excipients from the, from the, uh, from the injection. Thanks for your call, Shane. Appreciate it. Hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010. Hey, I don't usually like to talk about the whole vaccine controversy except to say that when you inject something in the blood, you're bypassing the body's fail-safe mechanisms, the, the liver specifically, for purifying the blood, for keeping the blood clean. Remember, all diseases sell disease. All, dis all cell disease is blood disease. The blood is the sacred space. You inject things through the skin into the blood at your own peril. I don't want to get into the whole controversy of vaccines, but it just doesn't make sense. If, if vaccinations are so darn effective, who cares whether you vaccinate or not? Just vaccinate your kid and then don't worry about it because the vaccine is so effective. That's the 800-pound that's the, the, the gorilla in the room. Why the heck does anybody care who gets vaccinated? If you want your kid vaccinated, vaccine, vaccinate your kid, fine. And now he's protected against all of us crazies who don't want to vaccinate our children. Vaccination is problematic for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons it's problematic is the vaccine contains fillers and excipients. So you're not just getting the vaccine, you're getting the preservatives and you're getting the fillers and you're getting the oil. I tell a story. Uh, oftentimes, I've probably told on this program a few times, I, I was talking to a friend of mine who's in the oil business in this, uh, not the, uh, in the food oil business. And uh, he was telling me how they were in a meeting and they were going to try to sell, sell their oils to a vaccine company, to a drug company to put in their vaccines because vaccines typically are in an oil base. And come to find out this big drug company, I won't mention their name, this big drug company was actually using rancid oil in their vaccines and they didn't even know it. They didn't even think about it. It didn't even dawn on them that the oils they were using were oxidized. And this is what was being injected into people's blood. So, look, you can, I don't want to get into the politics of it. It doesn't sound nice that a government would mandate or force you to put something in your blood. It sounds wrong to me. But the fact of the matter is, is that if vaccines are so darn effective, who cares if you're vaccinated or not? Because your kid will be protected, right, if it's so, so darn protective. Whether it's protect, so darn protective or not, we don't really know. 
a lot of the, the, the beneficial results associated with vaccines can also be attributed to better cleanliness and better hygiene 